Hail the festival day, blessed day that art hallowed forever, day when our Lord was raised, breaking the kingdom of death. All the fair beauty of earth, from the death of the winter arising, Every good gift of the year now with its master returns. Hail the festival day, blessed day that art hallowed forever. Day when our Lord was raised, breaking the kingdom of death. Of the rave to know, no, O Lord, the author of life and creation, treading the pathway of death, new life you gave to us all. Hail the festival day, blessed day that art hallowed forever. When our Lord was raised, breaking the kingdom of death. God the Almighty, the Lord, the ruler of earth and of heaven, guard us from harm without, cleanse us from evil within. Hail the festival day, blessed day that art hallowed forever, day when our Lord was raised, breaking the kingdom of death. And with your spirit. We celebrate the third Sunday of Easter. A very warm welcome to all who are joining us through the instrument of modern media. I offer this holy sacrifice of the Mass for you, the people of the parish, for the holy souls in purgatory, and for the souls of Frederick Romano Misoso, Elenita Sands, Mark Doyano. John Brian Redmond, Robert Venieri, and Francis Madracci. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate worthily these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary and the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Yeah. 
is rejoicing of the day of resurrection through our Lord Jesus Christ your son who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit one God forever and ever Amen A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and proclaimed, You who are Jews, indeed all of you staying in Jerusalem, let this be known to you, and listen to my words. You who are Israelites, hear these words. Jesus the Nazarene was a man condemned to you by God with mighty deeds, wonders, and signs, which God worked through him in your midst, as you yourselves know. This man, delivered up by the set plan and foreknowledge of God, you killed using lawless men, 
to crucify him. But God raised him up, releasing him from the throes of death because it was impossible for him to be held by it. David says of him, I saw the Lord ever before me. With him at my right hand, I shall not be disturbed. Therefore, my heart has been glad and my tongue has exalted. My flesh too will dwell in hope because you will not abandon my soul in the world nor will you suffer your Holy One to see corruption. You have made known to me the path of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence. My brothers, one can confidently say to you about the patriarch David that he died and was buried, and his tomb is in our midst to this day. But since he was a prophet and knew that God had sworn an oath to him, that he would set one of his descendants upon his throne, he foresaw and spoke of the resurrection of the Christ, that neither was he abandoned to the netherworld, nor did his flesh see corruption. God raised this Jesus, of this we are all witnesses. Exalted at the right hand of God, he received the promise of the Holy Spirit from the Father and poured him forth as you see and hear. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Lord, you will show us the path of life. Lord, Lord you, you will, will show, show us the path, path of life. Preserve me, O God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, you are my Lord. O Lord, it is you who are my portion and come. You yourself who secure my heart. Lord, you will show us the path of life. I will bless the Lord who gives me counsel, even at night directs my heart. I keep the Lord before me always, and with him at my right hand I shall not be moved. Lord, you will show us the path of life. And so my heart rejoices, my soul is glad, even my flesh shall rest in hope. For you will not abandon my soul to hell, nor let your Holy One see corruption. Lord, you will show us the path of life. You will show me the path of life, the fullness of joy in your presence at your right hand bliss forever. Lord, you will show us the path of life. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, if you invoke as Father him who judges impartially according to each other's works, conduct yourself with reverence during the time of your sojourning, realizing that you were ransomed from your feudal conduct, handed on by your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a spotless, unblemished lamb. He was known before the foundation of the world, but revealed in the final time for you 
who through him believe in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are in God. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Lord Jesus, open the scriptures to us and make our hearts burn while you speak to us. Alleluia. And with with your spirit. spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory Glory to you, you, O Lord. Lord. That very day, the first day of the week, two of Jesus' disciples were going to a village seven miles from Jerusalem called Emmaus, and they were conversing about all the things that had occurred. And it happened while they were conversing and debating, Jesus himself walked with them, but their eyes were prevented from recognizing him. He asked them, what are you discussing as you walk along? They stopped, looking downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, said to him and replied, are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know of the things that have taken place there in these days? And he replied to them, what sort of things? They said to him, the things that happened to Jesus the Nazarene, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word, before God and all the people. How our chief priests and rulers both handed him over to a sentence of death and crucified him. But we were hoping that he would be the one to redeem Israel. And besides all this, it is now the third day since this took place. Some women from our group, however, have astounded us. They were at the tomb early in the morning and did not find his body. They came back and reported that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who announced that he was alive. Then some of those with us went to the tomb and found the things just as the women had described, but him they did not see. And he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets spoke. Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them what referred to him in all the scriptures. As he approached the village to which they were going, he gave the impression that he was going on farther. But they urged him, stay with us, for it is nearly evening and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. And it happened that while he was with them at table, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them. With that, their eyes were opened and they recognized him, but he vanished from their sight. Then they said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he spoke and opened the scriptures to us. So they set out at once and returned to Jerusalem where they found gathered together the 11 and those with them who were saying, the Lord has truly been raised and has appeared to Simon. Then the two recounted what had taken place on the way and how he was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. 
Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Well, I'm going to stick with the artistic theme this week because we have another fabulous painting by the great Italian artist Caravaggio of yet another of Jesus' resurrection appearances. This was a painting entitled The Supper at Emmaus, which he painted in the year 1606. It's now in a museum in Milan. Again, if you want to go online and uh, see for yourselves, you can save a journey to Milan. Well, in this painting, there are five figures. The central figure, of course, is Jesus. There are the two disciples who had accompanied him on the road. And there is the innkeeper and his wife. Of course, they're not mentioned in the gospel account, but we can allow the artist a little bit of artistic license. Jesus is sitting at a table facing us. The two disciples are on each side. On the table, there is a bread, some bread, and a jug, probably a jug of wine. It is a visual account of this beautiful gospel story, just a page. Perhaps less familiar to us than the bloody hours of the Passion, or the scene of the crucifixion, or indeed the discovery of the empty tomb. It's very typical of the style of Caravaggio. The central part of the painting, particularly the figure of Jesus, is bathed in light. The rest is obscured in shadow. The technical artistic term is the chiaroscuro. Well, we heard from our gospel that these two disciples had fled Jerusalem after the killing of a man, Jesus. They, of course, were not the killers, but perhaps they were frightened that they might be next. And certainly, when Jesus meets them on the road, we are told that they are downcast. We don't know why they're heading to Emmaus. Is that their hometown? Is it a refuge, a place of safety? Is it merely a, a stop along the way back home? Anyway, as they walk, they brief Jesus on the political events that have been taking place in the last few days. Their dashed hopes that Jesus would be the one to redeem Israel, the promised Messiah. Well, this stranger who joins them, his response is not to talk about politics and fear, but of the scriptures, beginning with Moses and all the prophets. Here, if you see, we have a primitive structure of our Eucharistic celebration, beginning with the liturgy of the word, which comes before the breaking of the bread. Well, in this discourse on the scriptures, they don't recognize him. Was it growing dark on the path? Did Jesus somehow look different? But their hearts know him. And they seek to detain him, have him stay with them at the inn, join them for supper. And so he goes in with them. Well, our artist Caravaggio has chosen to depict an inn, and he has captured on canvas the moment at which the disciples recognize Jesus. The moment when the scales fall from their eyes as he blesses and breaks the bread and hands it to them. In the picture, the brightest area is the clean linen cloth on the table on which the bread rests. St. Augustine says this bread is the body of Christ, the same body which had lain in clean linen in the tomb, the same body broken for us, on the cross. Well, immediately after this action, Jesus vanishes from their sight. 
And now they are so moved as to hurry away back into the gathering shadows of the night, back towards the danger of Jerusalem. They are impelled to share the news that they have encountered the risen Christ. Well, the resurrection of Christ did not convince the world the shadows remained. It was left to that small group of frightened disciples to spread the word, to bring the light of Christ into the hearts of men. His resurrection still does not convince the world. The shadows remain. The doubters are many. It is left to us, an increasingly smaller number of disciples, to be the apostles of his light, to bring the truth of the resurrection aloud and alive into our world. Here on the clean linen of this altar, the bright light will shine on the bread that is to be blessed and broken. That is not all that there is to see, bread on a white cloth. What does our faith allow us to see? Do our hearts burn within us? Like the disciples at Emmaus, is it in the breaking of the bread that we truly recognize him? For this is the same risen Christ on this altar and on the altars of every Catholic church throughout the world, whether in Rome, Jerusalem, New York, Paris, or Palm Springs, Florida. In the breaking of this bread, all things are made new. The shadows of doubt flee. The light of the risen Christ shines. And once again, we triumph with him over death. Amen. Secondum scripturus 
Et ascendit in cielo, sedet ad exterum patris, et iterum venturus est cum gloria, judicare vivus et mortuos, cuius regna non erit finis, et in spiritus sancto dominum, et vivificantem, qui ex patre filioque procedit, qui cum patre et filio simul adorator, et convorificator, qui locutus es pembra ofetas, et unam sanctam catholica, et apostolicam ecclesiam, confiterra unum baptisma, in remissionem peccatorum, et exsecto resurrectionem mortuorum, et vita venturi seculi, has revealed himself in the person of Jesus Christ. We walk with him when we listen to the scriptures and share in the breaking of the bread. United with him in our hearts, we offer our prayers to our Heavenly Father. Let us pray for a deep faith and hope in the risen Lord, so that like the first generation of Christians, we may share these gifts with others we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Let us pray that we do not let familiarity blunt our sense of wonder when we celebrate Mass together. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for a deeper knowledge and understanding of sacred scripture. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Let us pray for those whose violence in our world that they may be confounded, confused, and converted by the love and forgiveness of their victims, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Let us pray for all the sick and suffering, those facing end-of-life circumstances. We pray especially for those afflicted with the COVID-19 virus, that they may be restored to full health. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who have died, especially Aldo Predraha, Danielle Christine DeCenso, that they will find the fullness of joy in God's presence. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear Lord. our prayer. God, our refuge with the travelers to Emmaus, we rejoice in the risen Lord's presence at our table. Guide us along the path of life in his company and make us grateful messengers of his saving love through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, O my soul, O my life, I will praise the Lord, I will sing. Pray. 
and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name for our good and good of all his holy church. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant church, and as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him the children of light rise to eternal life, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death, and in his rising the life of all has risen. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Sanctus, 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 Dominus, Deus, Sanctus. 
You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Luke and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and Gerald our Bishop, your order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O oh merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, 
and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And let us offer one another the signs of Christ Jesus. On your day, we told with Pecata Mundi, Misere Nobis. On your Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not I'm worthy really that you should enter under, under my roof, roof but only say the word, word and my soul shall be healed.
Christ. The blood of Christ. The body of Christ. The disciples recognized the Lord Jesus in the breaking of the bread of a Regina Chevi, Veta Re Ave Voya, Quia Quemeru Visti Portare Ave Voya, Resurrection, Sigurdicit Ave Voya. Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you are pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, I'm afraid there are no updates, still no uh, visible end in sight to this tunnel, but we do pray we shall come out into the light in due course as soon as we can. Again, many thanks to all who continue to send in their offering or to give online. It is helping us to keep our heads above water. And we, Father Edgar, Father John, Deacon Greg and myself, we continue to pray for you and your families. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Now for the blessing. May God, who by the resurrection of his only begotten Son, was pleased to confer on you the gift of redemption and of adoption, give you gladness by his blessing. Amen. May he, by whose redeeming work you have received the gift of everlasting freedom, make you heirs to an eternal inheritance. Amen. And may you, who have already risen with Christ in baptism through faith, by living in a right manner on this earth, be united with him in the homeland of heaven. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Jesus shall reign wherever the sun doth his successive journeys run. His kingdom stretch from shore to shore till moon shall wax and wane no more.
sacrifice. Thank you everybody for tuning in and watching our live stream mass or if you have this shared or are watching it later thank you again for joining us for our act of Sunday worship we still continue even though we're behind closed doors if you're not a subscriber to the YouTube channel please do subscribe it helps us to disseminate our information don't forget we're also still at a big thank you for all those who are mailing in their offertory envelopes and you can go to our online giving also from the website stlukeparish.com s-t-l-u-k-e stlukeparish.com hope to see you all in person very soon